What up, guys? Pardon that fear. Now, as you all know, because I am in fact Danish, that obviously also implies that I can recite the entirety of Hamlet, written by Shakespeare, from start to finish, no problem, in my sleep, like every other day. That is a fact. Ah, to be or not to be. Legendary! Legendary! Legendary? Legend! Oh, oh! Legendary! Legend. Legendary. Legendary. <laughs> uh -huh. Total fucking legend right there. That is indeed the question. Because today we're doing the final five legend challenges to see if you guys are truly legends. I mean, obviously to me, all of you are legendary, but <laughs> most legendary viewers on YouTube. But still, today we're going to determine those that are just a tiny bit more legendary than the others. Just a tiny bit. Uh, <laughs> legendary enough to get the legendary challenge fl uh, frame. <laughs> that was a lot of legend. Anyways, <laughs> today we're doing the final five maps, Act, uh, act 3, as well as Skid Brigade. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you at the end. Up next, we have everyone's favorite against the grain. Now, this one is pretty straightforward. It can't be soloed, no matter how many compots you have. It does require a minimum of two people. And if you have a, a third person on board, then it should be uh, pretty much a done deal if you uh, have a, an idea of what you're doing. Now, the 60 second timer starts the moment you activate uh, or release this first prisoner. And essentially the tactic uh, you're going to use, as soon as you activate the first, uh, or release the first prisoner, one person, preferably on the handmaiden, is going to pop the Kong pot or speed pot or whatever you have, and then you're going to rush as quickly as possible in through here, down and up, and then you're going to open these four, uh, four cages. Okay, the moment you open the fourth cage there, what happens is this ladder here is going to drop down. So... The rest of your team are essentially going to wait here while you do the first rush. Then as soon as the ladder drops, they're going to go up the ladder. Obviously, they're going to take these two cages on the way. And then, d depending on whether you have one or two people, then uh, you're going to go through here. So if you only have two people, then the fastest way to do this is to start with the top part by doing a crouch jump here. Then grabbing uh, these two here and then jumping down and grabbing these two down here. Faster to go from up to down, than from down to up. But if you have three people, then you simply have one going for the upper and one going for the lower. Um, and that way it should be a pretty uh, pretty easy... Uh, pretty easy challenge. If you're using a compact, make sure you use it properly. Instead of spamming your ultimate, it's way better to use them sort of than my coordinated. Like that, and it's not it's not worth it to use here unless you need to prevent getting attacked. Right? So that was what I would do on the handmaiden. Meanwhile, you'll have something like a battle wizard, for example, because uh, with the double ulti, that could be really effective. They would then be waiting here. In the moment this drop, they'd be going up here. The person in the back should take these two. Uh, it's not necessary, not necessary, but if you want to optimize it as much as possible, then in theory, whoever is furthest in the back and slowest is, is going to be the one who grabs these two. So the two faster players, or, uh, classes, can rush up here. And depending if you have an ability, you can also use that here. That's also like if you want to want to make sure that it's a, a done deal, you don't fuck up the crouch jump. But as you saw before, you can do it with just a crouch jump. If it works the other way, it does. Yeah, it does. I hear the gas rat. Anyways, and then you drop down and grab these two, and that's it. We should move on. You should be able to manage that in 60 seconds. It takes way less than 30 seconds to get the first four. And usually with this tactic, you should have a spare, a couple of spare seconds at the very least. 
especially if you're three people or more. And uh, then you simply win the map. Like that. Up next, we have Empire in Flames. Now, this is probably the hardest challenge that you can solo. And, uh, essentially, you need three turtles. You need to drag them all the way to the end. You might as well bring the first one. You know, you might fog up underway. There are three fixed fatal positions, but you can get more than three. But there are three like locations where you're always going to find one of these barrels. And uh, good idea to practice a little bit, you know, in uh, sort of the barrel movement. And you want to essentially want to hold the barrel as little as possible once you get to the uh, minions. You want to pick it up, uh, jump and throw. Don't ever want to just statically hold the barrel for too long. That barrel over there in the second spawn. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to have a team, so you don't have to do this. Well, I'm just um, lazy to kill the boss in this instance. Oh, that was... There's some tactics you can use to sort of juggle the barrels a bit easier. Another thing you can do to have a, an easier time is uh, you take these two barrels, just throw them over there. That way you don't have to deal with them throughout the uh, the whole basement part. Fine, you can grab that from the other side. Did you spot the flaw? Because I completely missed it in the moment. Yeah, so they must have grab that from the other side. Now, if you're soloing, and you're gonna do like this on the handmaiden. Oops. That way you can skip the whole uh, basement as well. What's what the hell happened to the barrel? <laughs> I've seen this before. This is the feet of the world. On the third fixed barrel uh, spawn. Up here. I want you to get to this area here. You can also throw them over. Maybe that it only works here. I know I forgot one, but you know, it doesn't really matter. It's you get the uh, the idea of it. It's mostly meant for all of the the tips. So once you get to this area here, then one thing you can another shortcut you can take is you can sort of throw the barrels up to a guy who's standing up here. When you leave on one more, just for realism, 
There we go. So you leave the three barrels in that corner there. I don't know if this is still a thing. I, I don't think so. But in the very early stages of this challenge, if one of the uh, these three barrels, if one of them exploded, then uh, it wouldn't count. So uh, I, I don't know if that's still a thing. If that actually prevents the challenge from uh, from popping, but it uh, it used to. So just in case, I thought I'd rather tell you. But I'm not certain if that's still uh, something you need to worry about. Obviously, once you have. Oops. Have it all the way, then you start picking up the barrels. Huh. And that's how you beat it. No. <laughs> And obviously, you don't die there. You fill it with all the yeah with those three barrels, um, activate it, and beat the map. And that's pretty much it. In terms of heroes, obviously the handmaiden because she's just the single best hero for uh, like mobility-wise with the uh, the lowest sort of cooldown on her invis. Shade also works with uh, the low uh, invisibility cooldown. Those are the most important. Uh, is the most important pick, I would say. Also, Battle Wizard and use the momentum of her teleport to throw them really far as well. Obviously, the Celeb can do that as well. Uh, I don't, and the, the Foot Knight, for that matter, although I don't think he has enough mobility for a pick to be sort of worth anything extra. But generally, just people that you, you also want some crowd control, create some space. The Battle Wizard is also great for that around the barrel because, you know, the Battle Wizard can use the Conflag staff on the barrel without. You know, having to worry. And yeah, you try that a couple of times. Practice your uh, your barrel sort of <laughs> your barrel mechanics. Essentially, if you're running uh, straight ahead, right, and you do a jump throw like this, uh, straight up into the air, then it's gonna land exactly where you're at because it's gonna it's gonna get exact same momentum. So if you time it, if you're spamming E while looking straight ahead, uh, and you've practiced it a bit. And uh, you can actually see, even though it doesn't always get picked up, then it bounces, and then you can sort of adjust after, miss it uh, on the first. This can be really useful um, when you're trying to get through minions, and there's nowhere to put the barrel that's safe. You can sort of do one of these, a pass, you know, almost like, just pretend like you're playing basketball. <laughs> see? Here we go, Michael Jordan coming in on the... Uh, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and of course. Oh. Up next, we got the festering round. Now, the key to, to success here comes down to two things. First of all, you want to have a really tangy class with a bunch of sustain around him. That could be a salad with the damage reduction passive uh, or the temporary HP. It could be an iron breaker. Um, you could have a Foot Knight for the extra damage reduction. You could have a Grail Knight for the damage reduction if you get the right, um, right task. You could even have the Mercenary for his heal and damage reduction. There's plenty of options. You could have uh, the Waystalker for uh, uh, the healing passive. There, there's plenty of sort of uh, plenty of ways to boost overall amount of health. But it, the, really, the most important thing is that everyone everyone is really sort of sparse with their healing. Uh, all the healing you grab here, you want to have as much of it as possible, many med kits as possible, and essentially, sometimes it can be worth it even to just intentionally die from the damage, just to use a med kit on uh, whoever is the person destroying the uh, the Nurgles. That is the next thing. I definitely, 100% suggest that you select one person and one person only. Wrong corner. <laughs> I definitely suggest that you select one person and one person only, and that person will destroy 100% of the Nurgles, and everyone else just makes space. Just creates the space that person needs, 
in order to consistently uh, ensure that you actually take the damage from every single one of them. Because what usually happens, like the thing that goes wrong with this challenge, is that one of them gets destroyed, yet you weren't prepared for it or you were standing in the wrong spot, and you end up not taking the damage. So if you're not taking, you want to move around a little, look for that, that green uh, little spot on the floor, indicating where the, the damage is. It's, it, might, it might seem obvious and easy, but trust me, there's a couple of them, uh, especially in the second second part, where uh, it can get tricky to actually like actually find the correct spot once in a while, especially in the midst of, uh, of pressure and stuff trying to kill you all around. And so you obviously want to stick with your team, sustain whoever is the, uh, the chosen one, so to speak. Remember that every single one of them can be uh, pickled with melee. Oh. oh, only just made that because the bot actually hit it. <laughs> that almost have cost me the challenge. Not that I'm actually going to get it, but... Pathetically. Now there used to be two of them in particular that uh, were really hard to actually stand in the right spot for, but thankfully they're fixed and now is this one sometimes bugged out. And especially this one. This was the one that used to like, you have to jump up the wall in like awkward places to actually uh, take the damage. Thankfully that is fixed now, so it's not too bad. Now if it looks different, it's because I had to redo part of the recording. So, uh, but uh, as for the last bit here, I usually prefer taking the middle one uh, as the final one, because that way you're close to... Uh, that way you're closest to uh, the end point. There we go. This one is fairly straightforward. Pretty clear to see where uh, the Nurgle it lands. Then there's the bit up here. Oh shit. Now the reason I go up here is quite simple. It's because it used to be at least that sometimes it would literally land up here. Which in which case you actually wouldn't be able to take the damage on the ground. So I don't know if that still happens, but for that reason I prefer, you know, just better safe than sorry, right? So I'll go up there, then I'll destroy it, and then I'll check if it actually lands up there, or if it lands in the bottom on the ground. And then there's plenty of time to jump down and get hit by it. Also, uh, just as a more general, uh, general tip that you obviously don't want to use here, but when you're playing this map, you can actually just take the final one from, you know, through here, shoot it. But you obviously should not do that, since uh, that's going to make it pretty difficult to actually take the damage. Uh, so really, I actually did them in kind of a stupid order, if you think about it. Because you want to take the, f the one over there, uh, alongside the second one up there. And then you want to take that, and then go straight to this one as the third. Then you want to move back, and then you want to take this one as the fourth. Then take the one in the back as the fifth, take this one as the sixth, and of course, lastly, this one as the seventh. And then all there's left to do really is uh, beat the map. And of course, meanwhile you're doing that, of course it looks super easy when there's no minions there. Uh -huh. But the trick is really to have a competent team around you that's constantly healing you when you need it. And, and it's okay to actually take so much damage that you actually die. Then have your friend, um, then have your friend uh, revive you, uh, and then you can use all of the temporary HP you then have right after you died. Use as much of that as you're comfortable with, and then get a heal. That way, it should be way more effective in terms of how much healing you actually need. Um, and again, I haven't even taken the damage reduction buffs, as I recall, on this guy, so uh, that should also make it easier. So this, this isn't too hard. Really, the, the, the biggest danger is that you miss, uh, that you're on the right spot at the right time when one of the Nurgles are breaking. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.
And up next we got the Budvar. 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 Budvar the beautiful. No. Come, hack me down if you can. I need no aid against weakling Southlanders. This is what we're here for, isn't it? We'll fight. Don't you worry about that. King Tom. Sorry, I couldn't uh, couldn't help myself. Really in the mood to slaying some Budvar. And up next we have our good old friend Budvar the the basic. Ha! Budvar the basic. I shall face you alone. Now, essentially, you need Budvar to charge into five Chaos Warriors. Now, I'm probably gonna have to kill my boss momentarily, so otherwise we're gonna kill Budvar too quickly. But essentially, I like to get him low, low enough that you can kill him in a, you know, fairly quickly, but not low enough that he dies accidentally. And then you essentially uh, need to be patient and hope that he has worry. Nice, nice. Kill the bots now. Why they're gonna kill the Chaos Warrior, obviously. But this is another case where it's to some extent easier when you're solo because that way you can guarantee a direct line between you know his charge and the Chaos Warrior. Charges now. Good. Of our charge. Oh, no, that was dead. We're on two, two or three now. Where was that charge going? I'm back. There we go, that was one, possibly even two. Safely kill one or two of them now. Without it being an issue. Arch Budvar. Him, 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 him. There we go. I'm pretty sure that was actually five. Pretty close at least. Now would be the time then that you would rest your teammates. And that's pretty much it. That's what you need to do. You can do it uh, as a full team. But uh, usually when you're a full team, again, because of the split ups. Um, then whoever has aggro on Bodvar also needs to have aggro on the Chaos Warriors. And that's where it can get a little bit tricky from time to time. Now, lastly, we got Skittergate. Now, remember to use this trick here. If you get a potion spawn here and you have a Kong pot, then uh, make sure to leave it there. Or the 
boss fight. Maybe if you get a loot rat in the portal, just leave all of the good stuff there so uh, you know it's there when when you really need it. For some reason, every time I tried to activate the boss fight by, you know, flying back and forth, it, it bugged out. So instead, I'm going to do this uh, this little showcase here. You hear what I hear, mate? So essentially, what you want is to shoot him in the controller. Now, the controller is that thing on his back. So when, when uh, you want to have one person on this side and another person on this side. And every time he's shooting one way, I would be behind him now and then I would shoot him in the controller. The controller being, uh, being this little thing on his back. And you, if, if you hear the headshot sound, that means you hit it perfectly. Now, if you try to focus your damage on that, then essentially what's going to happen is Rastnit is going to fall off. And when he falls off, if you do it perfectly, you're going to get exactly three chances to damage Rastnit before, before the part of the fight where he teleports around, right? So you can essentially get him roughly to 5% health, uh, 5 to 10%, something like that. Um, if you get him in lower than that, then he actually uh, regenerates back up to like 10, 20 percent, something like that. But watch out for that. Now, those are the three windows in which you want to maximize your damage on Rasknit. And that's what, what you want to spend your energy on. So essentially, Shade should never use the ulti, uh, and same goes for Huntsman or anyone else, on that guy. So that guy, you're just slowly, pin, you know, slowly taking him down by shooting him in the controller, staggering him causing Rasnit to fall off. As soon as he falls off, you're going to damage him uh, until, like, when you reach a certain threshold, then he's going to teleport back up and jump back up on his back. Then you're going to repeat that process. And if you do it correctly, then by the time Death Rattler is at 5 to 10% health, he's going to drop a third and final time. That's when you're going to get him really, really low. Uh, after the third time, you're going to have your last Kong Pot ready and a Shade or a Huntsman or whatever positioned here. And the reason you want the position here is because the moment you kill Death Rattler, this is where Rathsnit is going to start. And then that's where you're going to pop that Kong Pod and deal the final damage. Uh, you can have another player over here because that's where he's going to teleport afterwards. And that's how you kill him in 20 seconds, essentially. It's a good idea to have a full pre-made team for this one because it does require a bit of coordination. It's nice to have some space to work with. But if everyone knows what the plan is, and uh, then it's just about execution, right? It's totally doable, especially if you have two Kong Pots um, and a high DPS ulti hero. Then it's definitely doable. Um, but just watch out, make sure you don't get him too low on that third attempt. And that's about it. Anyways, those were the 13 Legend Challenges. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you did. Um, or feel free to give me some uh, viewer suggestions for upcoming uh, guide topics. I'm always reading all comments, so uh, feel free to hit me up down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out. Legendary.